Hello and welcome back. I thought we'd have a, a swift look at these uh, rather fine LNER coaches from the sort of mid late 70s. So we'll just pop these down. I got them last year. I've been sort of avoiding buying them for quite some time, you could say. The, the boxes are in, in reasonably good condition. They're, they're quite uh, what we call shelf worn. And I believe these date from uh, between 77 and 78 in, in boxes like this. And with the coaches in the way they are, we'll have a look at the coaches shortly. There's a, a price a price ticket there, John Menzies. I'm not familiar with John Menzies as a as a model railway supplier. My knowledge of them is a, is a news agent on railway stations back in the uh, um, late 80s and early 90s. So we've got uh, a break here, R436, and I've got three composites, R435. So if we just have a look at the uh, 77 catalogue, which I think is the, the first year they appeared. I'll have a look here. We've got them as new items. Whoops, new items there on uh, page 29. Fine looking things, aren't they? And uh, they replaced the, the, uh, the, the LNER teak coaches which came along 1970. Although I believe these, uh, these coaches shown here as uh, model number R937 and 938 originally started life with uh, model numbers of uh, 745 and, and 746. And I think this was their last year. And if you read this interesting note at the top of the page here, we have got uh, to avoid disappointment, Hornby will, will produce special limited edition of coaches shown on pages 26 and 27 for early 77 and will subsequently replace with a new coach range illustrated on page 28, 29 and 30. So that they're warning that uh, this is your last chance to get these uh, older style coaches. So I imagine a number of people may well have had orders in for some of these coaches and this was the, the last chance to get them. So let's just flip back to this page here, have another swift look at those. And we can see the newer coaches, we've got the Southern Region and that LMS coaches there. And we've got some GWR coaches. Let's have a look over the other side. And we've got some uh, maroon and creams and a new version of the Pullman and a golden arrow style coach there as well. So a year of change, I think, in, in 77. Let's have a, a swift look at what sort of pricing they were at. There we go. We've got silver seal wagons. We don't want those. We want the uh, silver seal coaches. Here we are. There's the, uh, the original old sort of trying ones from 1970. Uh, with their new numbers, and they were £2.75 each by the looks of it. And let's look up for the uh, the new ones here, R435 and 436, and they were £2.85, just a, a few pence more. And I thought we'd better have a, a flying Scotsman to pull these coaches. Now this this one's made out of bits and pieces, I think. I, I bought it for spare parts. We'll have a look at it a, a little later on. Nice stop there, and we'll switch the points, and we'll roll back and... Uh, pick up those terrific looking coaches. They look quite impressive, don't they? Nice bright white roofs. And then out we go. We've got a lovely look down the side of these coaches and at the detail. And they look absolutely fantastic. And off into the distance. So we'll just have a, a swift look at the, uh, the brake here, R436. I believe this is between uh, 77, 78. Um, when they were first issued, they had these style of bogies, and I believe in uh, 79 they gained uh, what's called Gresley brogies. I don't have an example of those. And then in 1980, they, they changed the uh, the model number, changed to uh, 478, and they gained um, a full teak end here and a black corridor connection. So they, they changed their manner of production, so it gained a, a new model number at that stage. But some really beautiful detail on it, on here, isn't there? And I think this uh, this coach um, underframe was used on a number of coaches that came along in the mid 70s, which we just saw in those catalogue pages. Some fine printing here as well, isn't there? Lovely drop shadow on that on that lettering. Quite impressive things. And if you if you look at this compared to uh, the uh, the earlier trying offering from uh, 1970, um, there's a, a marked difference in detail, isn't there? Let's have a look at that. We've got that same effect in the plastic, which I believe they, they added a chemical to make it uh, sort of separate and create that sort of teak effect. But uh, 
Again, I don't know whether either of the coaches is especially genuine scale length, but uh, I think these, these are quite impressive. Lovely white painted roof with quite a lot of detail on, on the newer version. As uh, the old trying one has just reused the, the coach used a, the coach roof used on many different coaches over the time. So we'll just pop that down. And say we've got silver seal wheels and they spin beautifully. They're lo lovely and free rolling. And the, uh, the coupling is uh, incorporated into the uh, into the bogey there. It's plastic. So I suppose it's less susceptible to, to bending metal hook though. So I say they, they do run really smoothly. We've got uh, Made in Great Britain and Hornby on the bottom there. The buffers are, seem to be part of the underframe detail. But I think that end is probably just stuck on. And I'm not quite sure. We'll pop that down, have a quick look at the composite. I'm saying that they are lovely detail. So composite coach R435. And again, undergoing the same changes as the brake coaches. Um, getting the Gresley bogies and then the uh, the teak ends as time moved on and, and gaining the new model number R477 to uh, to uh, to go with it as it got the teak ends in the, in 1980 and then compared to the original trying coaches uh, both of these coaches have wonderful interiors as well don't they and that glazing detail there we've got the handrail running along the window there if I just have a look at the, uh, the composite from the from the early 70s there as well. You see you've got that handrail on the glazing detail on the earlier coach, but far more detailing along the along the edges. Let's just have a look at the other side. So they really are quite something. I think you would have desired these if you had if you had these when, when these new ones came along. We'll pop them down. Have a swift look underneath. Again, same underframe detail from what I can see and made in Great Britain. Hornby's name, lovely, free-running silver seal wheels, quite high technology at the time, I think, although possibly not as good as all metal wheels. Still there, they are really lovely things. And a terrific sound there, as she builds a little power, coming up towards the, the third radius curve, just anticipating the elevated section now, so we're building it up a little bit more. You can hear the change in tone as she begins to climb there. And in the next shot, we'll get a great view of the valve gear. And I don't think we're getting any wheel slip at all here. We do have magnesium in this sort of bits and pieces model. And beautifully onto the bridge. Lovely. The change in colour as those coaches go through the light coming around the bend there. And as ever, we've got to back off the power a little bit or it'll really tear away. We'll have to try and get a shot there where we can see the uh, glowing firebox at some point during this video. Absolutely terrific there, charging towards camera. So you'd have had to wait till uh, 1978 to get the uh, sleeper coach. Let's have a, a swift look at uh, page 45 here. Got these great big photographs of, of the range of uh, L and the RT coaches. I know we can see the, the sleeper car, new for 1978, model number R448. It looks quite a fine thing, some stunning photography in this uh, in this catalogue. So we'll pop this down and we'll, um, we'll have a look at the coach. So I didn't get them together, they came along separately, but still, I think uh, being produced in 78, I think the, the boxes have changed marginally. If you look at the, uh, the, uh, the style of, of uh, logo on there, we'll just have a look at uh, one of the earlier ones. It's dropped the name of Silver Seal. So if we look at that, the coach is from 77. So we've got, got a slight change in, in the packaging. Um, so Triangs or Triangle Hornby and Hornby Railways packaging is, is constantly evolving, I think. So we'll just pop that onto one side. And uh, we'll pop it out and have a look. So this box is not quite as tidy a condition as some of the other ones, but the coach is uh, in lovely condition on the inside. Let's have a look. There's lovely great big letters there. LNER on the side. Again, we've got the black ends. So it underwent uh, similar changes. It got Gresley bogies in 79. So I think in this form, it was probably only available in uh, for 
1978. And again, got the, the TKNs 1980, changing its uh, model number to uh, R479. I think largely this range of coaches was available until the late 90s, possibly into the 2000s. I'm not sure of the exact end date, but I think they made uh, many, many thousands of these over the years. So again, it's got the, the same underframe detail and these lovely smooth silver seal type wheels. You can see the construction there, the coach is just, the top is clipped in and I believe the glazing unit gives some, some rigid to support to the design of the coach as well as the interior seating. I think the, the roofs on all of these coaches are just painted up in white. We're just opening points number eight here when we'll take her onto the inside line. Let's see how we're doing with all of these coaches with the point work there. Looks fairly uh, impressive, doesn't it? And then we'll switch the points and off around the layout. Look at the uh, reflections on the side of the coach there in the red signal. That's quite pretty. And that slows down a little bit in that first radius curve. That really takes the, uh, the power out of it, doesn't it? So we've had to compensate for that there. And then we're going to turn through points number nine there, the double crossover back into the passing loop. Just slowing a little. And then we'll switch those points. I was very close with that, almost clipped the rear bogey. Over enthusiasm there. Lovely valve gear again. And we'll bring them gently to a stop. So after I'd got the the, uh, the original coaches and decided I wanted a, a sleeper to go with it, I would ordered this one online and, and when it arrived and it, and it came boxed quite nicely, um, there was an added bonus. I hadn't I hadn't realised looking at the pictures on my phone when I was uh, looking at the the uh, auction site that it had a, a coach lighting kit fitted to it and it's got these clips added into the bogies. I believe these could be used on all, all current uh, coaches in the late 70s. So the, the kit was R449, available between uh, 78 and 82. I believe they sold about 75,000 of them. And it would have required you to fit the kit yourself and dismantle the coach. And I have noticed that this coach doesn't fit together quite as it should have. Um, it is sort of peeling apart and there are a number of clips which are missing, which may have been a result of uh, dismantling the coach to fit this kit. And it does create quite uh, quite a lot of friction running these. I think uh, with the rake I've got on today on the layout, if you had all of them fitted up with these, there's just no way it is going to move. So uh, we'll just pop this down and have a look how that this appeared in the catalogue in 78. So it was a new item. Of course, uh, coach lighting wasn't new. It was uh, on the Mark IIs back in 69 to, I think, 72. I think they dropped it. To, it also added quite a lot of friction um, to the coaches. So here we are, our 449 coach lighting unit. The unit may be added to all current Hornby coaches except the four-wheelers, Pullmans and overseas models. So that, that could have made you... you layout look a little bit more exciting it certainly looks good doesn't it sitting there in the station with those coach lights burning away there and then there we have the the items there and the, the unit about to be plugged into the the bogey if we pop that down so it got me quite interested in, in the subject and I, I did search for one of these coach lighting kits and uh, here we have one the box is in fairly poor condition it's been taped up it's missing a flap and I've already part open the other end and the, the inside flap on this box is in fairly poor condition. I don't think that's going to last very long, but the rest of the kit is uh, intact. So if I uh, extract it from the box and then we can have, have a look at it. There we go. So original instructions, although I think the instructions have not been folded quite as they should be. So that's uh, the contact strips, which we'll, when we have a look at the instructions, you'll see would go along the inside with the uh, roof to supply power and hold the bulbs in position. And then we've got this sealed bag of the, the items which make up the kit. You've got some wiring and the plungers there, and then the spring clips which hold it hard down against the track, which uh, create a lot of that friction, That's sort of how brakes work, if you think about it. So we've got a couple of bulbs in there and then the, the plastic unit. So we'll, we'll pop that down. I think we'll leave that sealed. I don't think I'm going to open this. I'm quite happy with the example I've got fitted to this coach. As I say, if you get many of them together, I don't think you're going to have a, a free running set of coaches. So we'll pop that open. 
And here is quite a lot of instructions. You've got to dismantle the coach quite extensively to, uh, to uh, be able to fit these and the, uh, the lighting on the inside. So there are those four clips there, which I think may well be missing on my coach. And then we can see the wiring going through the, the uh, these clips, which go into the bogey frames. And that would be passed through the pivot in the center of the bogey there. So just have a swift to the other side. And we've got different layouts and where, where to position the bolts, perhaps. And uh, how to uh, separate the uh, the wire on the end of the bulbs and there, that wiring dropping down through the coach. So quite nice drawings. And there's that um, contact strip we just had a look at. Where, where is it? We'll just have a look. There it is. So that it was being applied to the inside of the coach there. So quite an interesting thing, quite a nice uh, set of instructions to have. I say I was quite, quite pleased to get it, but I thought I had, would have to have another another coach. The peg is making an awful noise, isn't it? Another coach without them rather than just take out the lighting kit. So it's quite nice to have the, the lighting kit in the coach. And she does light up. If you have a look at the insert picture, it does look quite nice with them blazing away. So here we have the uh, the coaches standing, waiting in the passing loop, and I've put on the extra sleeper coach with the with the lighting unit on it. But obviously, standing still, we can't have the lights blazing away like we could see in the catalogue. Otherwise, we'd need a uh, an overhead electric locomotive, I think, to make that that scenario work, or um, that digital stuff. I hear you can do that with. So we've got the whole rake sitting there, waiting to go. We'll just have a look right along and the other thing I notice about these um, coaches are they're relatively close coupled for a, for a triangle or a Hornby model if you just look at that between the coaches there they're nice and close together aren't they which is uh, quite a nice thing so we'll just uh, look right the way along all the way under those gantries and we've got the old uh, dodgy flying Scotsman sitting there which I mentioned earlier so we'll just open points number four there, and away we go. It's taking a little while to get, get underway, but gradually building up the power and out through the points. And she's going to snake around all the way under the elevator section. And we'll just plan to close those points behind them. There we go. And then we're going to build up a little power. She will stutter a little bit on this crossing as she comes towards us. And then away she goes into that third radius curve. And just listen to the uh, the noise. You can hear the chuff chuff sounds suddenly not running, but the motor's making plenty of noise, and we've got serious wheel slip there. She really doesn't like it, does she? In serious trouble. And I think it's that uh, sleeper with the lights causing us the, the whole problem there. A little bit more traction, nice view of the uh, glowing firebox there. And it's easing up a little bit now. And once we get all on the level, she'll pick up a little extra speed now and there we go so just those uh, pickups I think on the on the coach with the lights and let's see how we do with a slightly earlier flying Scotsman with uh, without nickel tires on it much much better but still getting some fairly serious wheel slip there aren't we and off into the distance effortless now once she's on the level of course so here I have the sleeper with, without the lighting unit fitted, we've just got the lovely smooth running silver seal wheels there. So we'll pop it on the track and we'll do a, a very not scientific uh, experiment here. So excuse my uh, fingers and hands whilst I get her on the rails. Now I'm at the top of the incline here. So this is the uh, last straight section and then we're into the curve section off around the bend there. So we'll start it right at the brake there and we'll let go and we'll see how, uh, how we do with it. So that's rather impressive, isn't it? So here is the um, other sleeper coach with the lighting unit fitted that we've, we've already had a look at. So these plungers here pick up the current and we've got one at either end of the coach there. I imagine this is to uh, improve reliability, although it would probably work with one at, one, at the end, one at just one end, I imagine. So we'll see if we can get this on the rails. Again, excuse the fingers. So, uh, I think we're on the rails there and we're at the same starting point so we'll see what the difference is in the run so one two three 
and away we go. So that's rather impressive, isn't it? You can see the, uh, the pickups here are acting as, a, as rather an effective brake. So if I just grab this uh, other phone here and handheld and we'll just have a look close in and we can see what we're up against there. So that plunger is just holding the coach steady just on the rails there, isn't it? So that really is not, not very uh, ideal at all. So if I just pop that down again, and you just you can hear that there's no um, nothing free running about that whatsoever, is there? So uh, I don't think you'd get many of those in your train. So I'll just pick that up again. So if we have a look at the wheels, they are free running, and it's just these plungers which are which are causing the problem here. So they do run relatively nicely, those silver seal wheels. So. Not a great idea. It seems silly not to. So here they are, both flying Scotsmans, pulling this uh, rake of teak coaches up the incline. Terrific noise and a lovely view of both of those glowing fireboxes there. And off into the distance, onto the suspension bridge there. Now I keep doing this, don't I? I keep making trains which are, are far too long for my layout, really. I suppose what I really need is a much larger layout, if only storming down the incline there and off into the distance. Now we're going to plan to uh, bring them round onto the inside line I think. We go slowing down a little now and we're going to prepare to open points number eight. See how well behaved they are. Slightly slow down there into the points. Looks pretty good so far. And then we'll just plan to close those points as they come through. There we go. And we should just have a, a, a very quick look at these two models, the, the Flying Scotsman in apple green came along in 68 and uh, got exhaust steam sound I think in 71 and nickel tyres 71 as well. Although this model is, a, I suspect, made up of bits um, in its more original form. Again, uh, sort of arriving in uh, 68, it had uh, steel tyres, which I think looks much, much better. And as we've seen on the layout, it does climb on and stick on the track way better than these uh, these nickel tyres. I believe uh, Flying Scotsman's are still in production today in one form or another, but this uh, original sort of trying Hornby version, I think, persisted through the 1970s with a number of minor changes. So this one I really did just buy as parts. Um, uh, parts for me, it was already in one part. One had already been constructed, but I believe somebody's put it together. It's got some... Uh, what well, I think quite unusual looking metal wheels. It did have the sandbox in it, although I have repaired it by putting a piece of uh, abrasive paper on the striker arm there, and um, or tone arm you could call it. Rear coupling was completely gone. The, the plastic part which would normally screw into is completely missing. So that really is just super glued on, onto the two remaining retaining clips there. And it's done a reasonably good job pulling that great weight around the layout. This was bent off at an angle, you can see that's been re-glued, that's completely shattered. But as you can see, it makes a, a good noise. Um, I've added a bit of extra weight in there, as I've said before, with these uh, steam sound tenders. But apart from that, it's in fairly worn condition, very glossy, glossy finish. So it's gonna be sort of mid early 70s like this, but I'm not, not sure about these uh, wheels. They are rather heavy. We'll just have a quick look at the main body the locomotive that's got some missing parts there should be some detailing here which is uh, sadly long gone but as i said i did buy it buy it for uh, parts if you have a look at this one here you can see that missing detail there you see that the difference in finish this earlier one is a much more matte or perhaps waxy look than this uh, very high gloss version of the uh, early mid 70s cylinder blocks all completely worn away so i've just stuck some uh, uh, very fine cut tape on there to, to represent the uh, the lining that should be on the, the on there. You say it's got the uh, the uh, plated wheels. Let's see, they don't do a lot for the grip. She has worn partially through some of the plating. She's uh, done a lot of miles this particular model, I think, and um, very strong. The firebox glow works, and uh, the motor is uh, in really good shape. If you look at the insert there, you can see. I know she looks on the inside, but 
as often happens, you, you buy things as, as parts and uh, you end up thinking, well, if I just, and they run quite nicely. Makes a good noise around the layout, doesn't she? A little bit of a crack through the uh, foot plate there. And I have added uh, some weight, just some blue tack in there actually. And this uh, rear truck does tend to bounce. Although the, the, um, the wheels do tend to do what they're supposed to do, but something about it, it just tends to come away on, on the point work without that extra weight. So I'll just pop that down. And again, this one really I bought a spare parts, but it's fairly nice condition. Um, the, uh, the lining and the lettering there is all the way that's a sort of tacky and sticky around it. And that's probably more how it should look. Um, I'm not sure when they, they got the green centers on the wheels, possibly in the late seventies. I'm not quite sure. Um, but it is, it's a fairly rough old model being used up uh, around the track quite a lot, I imagine. Um, although the motor pulls nice and strongly and the, uh, the glowing fireboxes we've seen works. Both of these models don't have nameplates. These are just uh, copies which I've made and knifed out. If you look closely, they're not quite as, uh, as pretty as factory stamped, die stamped ones. And again, I love these uh, wheels on these earlier Flying Scotsman models with steel tires and they do pull so much better, much better grip on, on, the, on the steel track. Both models have the magnet adhesion, but uh, I just thought we'd have a, a swift look over these. I think originally these would, would have been sold with the uh, crew and um, firebox glow. I believe they lost the firebox glow sometime in the early mid seventies as well. It's, cost cutting measures. So I think a little bit sort of minor variations through the 70s. So I think that's probably it for this week. I hope you've enjoyed the video. I had great fun making it. Thanks again for watching. It's hugely appreciated. If you look back next time, we'll have something else from the range to look at. Goodbye now.